Hey guys, so some of you may or may not know, but we just got back from an amazing trip traveling around South Africa. Both Sam and I absolutely love traveling, and after we had Jack, we really didn't want to give that up. So we kind of ummed and ahed over it, but in the end, we decided just to do it and embrace the idea of going traveling with a baby. And yeah, we had the most epic, epic trip. Traveling with a baby was incredible. We went all along the South Coast, along something called the Garden Route. We did so much, we met so many people, we saw incredible things. I just feel like along the way I learned a lot about travelling with a baby, the ups and the downs, and I thought that I would share my experiences on it in this video. Before we left, I was definitely anxious about it. I was worried that I'd forget something really important for Jack, I was worried that I would really want to be going around, seeing loads of stuff, doing loads of things, because that's what we used to do before Jack and just get really frustrated that we wouldn't be able to do that this time round. So here are my 10 home truths about going traveling with a baby. Number one, babies fly free. So it's kind of obvious, but for us actually, this was a really big impetus when it came to going traveling. We just realized that if we can go away, see the world, take Jack and he's for free, that's pretty epic. So go for it and go far. And if you do go far, take an overnight flight. We flew to South Africa, which is 12 hours away, and we flew at about eight o'clock at night, and it was actually amazing. Jack basically slept for most of the way, and I therefore also slept. And yeah, it was just, it was brilliant. Like I was actually thinking to myself, we should totally fly more often because he slept super well. On the way back though, he woke up a couple of hours before we landed, and yeah, I have to say that was pretty tough. Um, he is at the crawling stage, so he just wanted to be everywhere, he's super active. So, you know, Sam and I were passing between ourselves and he was going on the floor and kind of crawling up and down the aisle, which was sweet and everyone was kind of like, oh, it's really cute, but actually also a bit stressful because I kept thinking, oh, people kind of want to sleep or people want to watch their film, they don't necessarily want to see our son like crawling up their leg kind of thing. So I genuinely don't know what we would have done if he'd have woken up for longer. And actually I would say that flying somewhere like six hours away or something would be really hard, much harder than an overnight flight. Number two, if you go traveling with a baby, and I'm just gonna get right into the truths here, sometimes it might not feel like a holiday because yeah, it can be a bit stressful, all the navigating and the packing up and moving to a different place kind of every night or every other night. And sometimes, for example, when you find yourself sitting in the car at nine o'clock at night and it's pitch black and you're waiting to be shown your home for the night and your baby's crying in the back or when you get to your home for the night and they forgot to get a cot and you've got to work out what to do with a mattress and pillows and bolster the pillows up against the wall and just kind of hope that your baby doesn't roll over in the night onto the floor. Yeah, like it can just be, I suppose, like a little bit stressful and sometimes you might think, actually, this doesn't really feel like a holiday with a baby in tow. Number three, oh, going traveling with a baby means you sort of have to drop your routine. So Jack doesn't actually have really any sort of rigid routine. And I would probably say if your baby is in a super strict routine, going traveling might be kind of hard. The advantage of South Africa is that it was only two hour time difference, so Jack's body clock wasn't really affected. What I would say is stick to a couple of non-negotiables. So for example, we had one non-negotiable and that was Jack had to have a sleep in the morning. A couple of times when we were in Cape Town, we were some friends and we kind of forgot to let him sleep and come the afternoon, he was having a full on meltdown. He was like, not just upset, but just like really, really distressed. And we were like, whoa, okay, whatever happens, Jack has to have his morning sleep. And so after that, we just stuck to that. The rest of the things like bedtime, bath time, nap time, meal time, they just kind of went out the window and he just went with the flow. And I suppose actually we kind of developed a new routine for whilst we were out there, which is kind of cool. Which leads me on to number four, which is Jack adapted so well. And I really felt like over the trip, he changed and grew as a person. Sounds kind of weird. He hit loads of milestones, like he grew two new teeth. He started babbling loads of new words. He began to clap. He was scaling everything and everyone. So yeah, I definitely think that going traveling with a baby is so good for them. And I think that it definitely, yeah, developed Jack as a person. Number five, 
you will still do most of the childcare. Okay, let me put this more diplomatically. Whoever is the primary childcare will still do most of the childcare. It just kind of happened like that. I think particularly when you're traveling, because often we were doing things in a rush, often we were getting to a new place, often it was sort of the same routine things that you might do here just over and over again in loads of different places. So it just kind of fell to me and particularly towards the end. And I was kind of actually okay with that. Sam did all the driving and I kind of did most of the sort of everyday stuff with Jack that I would do here at home. So I suppose if you're looking for a real break from all of that, going traveling might not be the best one for you. Number six, that said, I definitely got a break in the form of cooking and cleaning, depending on what accommodation you go for. So we did a mixture of hostels and hotels and um, B&Bs. Most of them we had breakfast included. So that was amazing. And actually that was the best, like coming down and having breakfast made for you and a hot cup of coffee was just epic. Um, and also not having to clear up afterwards. I left so many places just saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I felt so guilty because we left so much mess, but it was also kind of amazing not having to do it myself. Number seven, you still get you time when you go traveling with a baby. Obviously not in the same way as you used to without a baby, but for us, for example, normally Jack was sleeping in the evenings when we had dinner. So we would enjoy some really nice meals and he'd just be asleep in the buggy. One thing that we got that was amazing was a blackout pram cover and I'll come on to that later with a couple of essentials that I think were really good. And when I needed a bit of me time then Sam sort of took over looking after Jack for a bit. Number eight, everyone was so nice to us along the way. People weren't necessarily used to seeing babies in like the hostels and stuff and they were so so friendly. A lot of times we were out and women inevitably would like wander up to us and kind of the man would just be like okay I've lost her. And um, yeah, she'd just want to cuddle Jack. And actually that was really nice. That gave us a bit of a break. Like sometimes someone would just hold Jack whilst we ate part of our meal. And that was like amazing. So yeah, people are super, super nice to you when you have a baby and you're traveling. But sometimes I don't always understand that you are a bit different to them when with the baby. Like the couple of times people said to us, oh, go on this hike or something. So off we went, Jack on Sam's back, whatever. And we get into the walk and we just realized that actually this is really not baby friendly in that like there's giant rocks and it's really slippery and yeah normally without baby on our back we probably would have done it but actually with a baby hanging off us maybe it's not that safe. Number nine going traveling with a baby slows you down and this is such a good thing as I said I was a bit worried about being in this new country and wanting to do everything and see everything kind of like we used to do without Jack and I knew that we wouldn't be able to, and we couldn't. And that was actually amazing. And some of the nicest times we had were when Jack was sleeping and we kind of let him sleep in the morning, for example, and we just had to wait. So we had our bags packed, but we'd just chill and look out the view, have a cup of coffee. And yeah, that was really, really nice actually. And number 10, unless you're going somewhere really remote, do not pack the world. So I really, really tried hard on this front and just took couple of pouches of food and about 10 nappies. We headed straight to the supermarket when we got there and picked up the rest there. A couple of essentials though that I am super glad we bought were books from home. Jack was reading books loads in the car and that was just super helpful to keep him occupied. A blackout for the pram as I mentioned before this was really useful for the evenings when we were going out to dinner or just there was a lot of noise and stuff happening. We just put the blackout over him as he slept and that was Pretty effective in keeping him asleep. Oh yeah, um, a high chair adapter. So loads of places that we were eating and staying in didn't have high chairs. And we've got this awesome cloth high chair thing. I would definitely, definitely recommend taking. It was just so helpful and meant that Jack had a high chair ready to go. So that's it. That's my 10 home truths about going traveling with a baby. We had the most epic time. It was such, such a special holiday. And um, yeah, definitely would recommend it. We're already planning where we can go next year on a similar sort of traveling trip. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this video. Um, leave me a comment below. Otherwise, yeah, thanks so much for watching and give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Bye. Bye.